Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Chair, for this chance to present our work for today. Nothing to disclose. So obstructive sleep apnea has a well-established correlation related to some conditions, including erectile dysfunction, nocturia, and metabolic syndrome. And this was caused by the intermittent hypoxia, as well as endothelial dysfunction and a pro-inflammatory state. It's frequently noticed that those patients with obstructive sleep apnea not only complaining of nighttime symptoms, but also a daytime frequency. So the question remains whether either, if there's any possible relationship between the obstructive sleep apnea and the overactive bladder. So in a community-based population of Canadian men, we aim to identify in this study the prevalence of the OAB symptoms among those patients with obstructive sleep apnea, as well as to identify any possible relationship between the obstructive sleep apnea, OAB, and erectile dysfunction. So this is a cross-sectional study in the context of the Men's Health Day run by McGill University. We analyzed the database of 988 men. All those patients underwent a clinical evaluation, a blood and urine test, and the questionnaires. Our outcomes was based on the questionnaires, the Berlin questionnaire to categorize our patient into high risk and low risk obstructive sleep apnea, OAB V8 for the overactive bladder symptoms, IPSS for lots, and the sexual health inventory. So we categorize our patient, as we can see in this table, into high risk and low risk, and the high risk account for around 23% around of our population. So when we compared both the groups in terms of demographic, we found that the high-risk group were significantly higher in terms of the hypertension, cholesterol, uh, BMI, and measured blood pressure as well. However, in terms of the lab results, uh, the low risk was higher in terms of cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and testosterone. So as a key message, the high-risk obstructive sleep apnea have higher rates of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes mellitus, and elevated BMI. And in terms of questionnaires, when we compare the outcomes between both a group, the high risk and the low risk obstructive sleep apnea, there was significant difference with the high risk score higher in terms of the ADAM questionnaire for the hypogonadism, as well as for the severe grade of IPSS for lots of symptoms and the OAB score. Furthermore, there was a negative correlation between the SHIM score for the erectile dysfunction and the OAB V8 score. So a key message is the questionnaire score indicates that high-risk obstructive sleep apnea have higher rates of hypogonadism, severe loss, and OAB. As a conclusion, higher OAB scores were found in patients with high-risk obstructive sleep apnea, and the severity of erectile dysfunction was correlated with the severity of symptoms for the overactive bladder syndrome and higher risk of obstructive sleep apnea was associated with metabolic syndrome and lower testosterone levels. Thank you. Questions or comments? So which came first, the obstructive sleep apnea or all the other correlated factors? And if you treat obstructive sleep apnea, do you make any of the others better just by doing that? Well, this is an important question, dear Chairman. We know that there is a common association and a common pathophysiology whether between the metabolic syndrome of our active bladder and obstructive sleep apnea. And certain studies for the obstructive sleep apnea found that the people treated with a CPAP they found an improvement significantly in their overactive bladder symptom. So this might explain the correlation between all three conditions. 